<laughs> I'm happy to provide a little bit of a break from that to have some happy, happy going on in your life. So um, I don't like scripts. I don't that, like that kind of stuff. I like to wing it. So that's what you're about to see me doing. So I was given a script to read for you. So allow me to switch my screen over. to learn from and interact with music professionals from around the globe representing every facet of the vast world of music today is monday tuesday june 9th my name is ralph hicks and i am executive director of let them drum nonprofit corporation here in the woodlands texas tonight i will be talking to you about when it's not about the drumming I encourage you to interact by replying to this live video stream with your questions and comments, which I will respond to throughout the hour with the assistance of Introduce Moderator. Assistance of my wife, Mark Hale Hicks. One disclaimer, while this is being streamed live, it will remain on the Keeping Beat Facebook page for future reference, so set your comments will also be remain part of the archive. And away we go. All right, like I said, I'm Ralph Hicks, and this is about when it's not about the drumming, using group drumming to commute to connect with your community. Ralph Hicks here. I'm a Spring High School graduate from Spring, Texas, back in 1995. From there, I was fortunate to be a member of the University of Kentucky Percussion Studio. And then after graduating there in 99, I came straight back home to Texas, which was always my intention to become a public school teacher for 19 years. It was this last year that I switched from public school teaching to real estate to actually increase not only my, you know, salary, but to increase the time I had free to dedicate to this, which is my baby, let them drum. So before we get going, I'm sorry, right there as well. I'm also on the Percussive Art Society Board of Advisors, Education Committee and Diversity Alliance, a member of the Woodlands and Conroe Chamber of Commerce, and I am published with Tap Space Publications. So, all right, well, I wanna go ahead and um, show you a short video first that explains what we are about, which is Let Them Drum. So let me go ahead and switch screens one more time sorry i've never been a host of one of these before okay so check out this video we have from the news oh uh, what uh, what what is that doing on here what uh, what what is going on i swear i didn't mean to have this on i'm so sorry about that yeah let me go ahead and find the little x button yeah i'll go ahead and get rid of this real quick so that uh, what what is this my real estate website where anyone in the greater Houston community would be able to find their perfect home? Now, <laughs> I know this isn't supposed to be about me. I'm sorry, but uh, I'm almost done. So anyway, here we go. Enjoy our almost three minute spot from Fox 26 back in 2016. With every beat of the drum comes friendship, creativity, and most of all, healing. It overwhelms me, the feeling, the positive. Now I'm getting teared up thinking about it. When Ralph Hicks broke through communication barriers with his special needs nephew, Luke, by using his love of drumming, he knew he was on to something big. One day I was sitting on the couch with him and I just drummed the rhythm on my leg and he answered me back. And that was the first time I was able to communicate with him and he was about four. So it was a, a unique thing. It was a special moment for he and I. Let Them Drum is a nonprofit organization that started as a drumming club at, at Mitchell Intermediate in the Woodlands for the special needs department and the mainstream typical percussion students. Now executive director for the program, Hicks found that mixing the two groups produces incredible results. The one that hit me right in the heart was it said for 20 minutes, my son felt like a, a normal student. 
And that really hit me in the heart, and we knew we were on to something special. He clarifies that he's not a music therapist, but the therapy activities they use are guided by a licensed music therapist from Sam Houston. And so they had helped us design our therapeutic treatments that we do with the kids, and they're very simple. And most of ours focus on social skills and um, paying attention, keeping your focus, learning how to introduce yourself to a group, learning how to control and accept the different levels of volume, which can be hard for some people. And um, the best element that we do, though, is because it mixes in our special needs kids and the typical kids. As for the participants without special needs, also known as the All-Stars, who actually perform all over town at community events and even Bryce University and a Rockets halftime game. That's my daughter. It's new tool. It just feels nice yeah, to like, well, tell people it's but the kids who really understand and who really hit them in the heart, they understood, wow, I helped this kid today. They come and they never look back and they're at everyone. So why drumming? And they can be drumming on this floor, on cups, on like their, their cheeks. They can do whatever they want. Now, as much as he loves percussion, Hicks hopes that Let Them Drum will expand. Like drums are my calling and I, i've tried ukulele i tried guitar i wasn't able to my brain wasn't able to figure that out but that's mm -hmm. where the music therapy comes into it because a, a true a certified music therapist can play the drums can play the guitar can play the piano can sing we stop at drumming dancing and singing that's about as far as i'll go because you don't want to hear me play ukulele <laughs> michelle marhar fox 26 news Oh, I love watching that. I'll tell you guys, with so much pain and suffering going on in the country, I've already had my cry today from how much our country is hurting and in need of healing. So it was, I had to admit that it was wonderful to just step away from all that, take it out of my brain up here in the suburbs. And as I got things together for this presentation, it's reminded me of how much good there is in the world. And so that was a really fun moment. I, I really enjoyed looking back on all this. So I look forward to sharing more in a little while. So basically, Let Them Drum. We are a 501c nonprofit corporation down here in the Woodlands, Texas. I was teaching for 19 years. And those of y'all who are fellow Texans, y'all know competition is high because we, we have football to thank for our funding. You know, I, when I was in college in Kentucky, I kept getting weird looks when I would ask people, what, you don't, you didn't have three band directors at your middle school and then four directors at your high school? That, that's, not, that's not common. And I would get a lot of looks because I, that's what I was used to. You know, the, the Texas, we are very fortunate to have amazing fine arts funding. And we, uh, I, I always felt in, in good hands, no matter what school district I worked in. I worked in Cypress Fairbanks ISD, Spring ISD, and then I ended my career after 12 years in Conroe ISD. And there was such camaraderie, and it was great, but with money and taxpayers, what does that come with? ROI, as you know, is a return on investment. And so they want to see that their money is being spelt, spent well, and unfortunately, in such an, in a, like an art form, it's hard to do that. And so un, I, I personally feel like it's slightly unfortunate, but it has so much positive. There's so many positive aspects, but with a few drawbacks is that we focused on competition. Now, I love that because I grew up in that. I, I was amazed getting to watch kids play college level four mallet music as freshmen as eighth graders, getting to play. Like I remember we had friends that we'd all gather around each other and we would run through drum corps licks. We learned the 92 Cavalier lick, the 93 cadets lick. Oh, we, we would learn all that stuff. And I never thought different because I, as a typical teenager, I, I existed in my own world. I was getting out of band what I wanted so I was fine. I was competitive. I played baseball. I enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. I liked winning. I liked being good. And it wasn't until much, much later after I get through high school and I get through college and I start my teaching is that I discover there's more. There, there's more to band. There's more to drumming than just the drumming. And that sounds weird saying. There, there's so much more to it. 
And so I discovered that I do when I look back as an old man, yeah, I know I'm almost there. But as I get older and we start becoming just introspective and start thinking about our lives, it's like, do I really want my only memories to be, I got a first division on this formal at Marimba Solo. I got a first division on this, blah, 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 blah. And it really hit home thinking, wow, there are a lot of kids who just aren't competitive. They're just not. They're, they're okay not winning. They're okay not being the best at everything they do. They just want to be involved. And I was lucky to be around some band directors who saw value in that to a certain level. Some band directors would create an entire second marching band for those kids who couldn't make the competitive band. And that was beautiful. And as I got older, I discovered that we could take it even farther. We could take it even farther and figure out how to help kids play a trumpet that can't see, or perhaps help a kid learn how to play a euphonium that only has two or three fingers on this hand. And we were able to, that just, that blew my mind about the possibilities of there. And so that's where we are now. We're eight years deep. We have a, an amazing staff. We, we, we enjoy everything we're doing. Of course, we're completely shut down right now. But anyway, so let me go ahead and um, spin you a yarn. Let's go all the way back to the very beginning. As I remember how to. You have a comment. Ooh, Miss Julie Hill has a comment. Let's see what she has to say. Uh, she supports her friend Ralph Hicks and his mission from Union City, Tennessee. Ralph is wonderful and a fellow University of Kentucky Wildcats. Go PAS, Diversity Alliance, and go Cats. All right. I was hoping you'd be watching, Miss Julie Hill. I got you in the presentation later on. Yeah. All right. So let me tell my story because we all have our why. Here's my why. That's Luke, Luke Millington, my sweet Lukey Luke. He is about six months behind my son and we just love him to death. We enjoy spending weekends at his house with his parents, watching Texans games, grilling up. And they got to grow up together, which was beautiful. But then I was, then around three years old, three and a half years old, we noticed that Luke wasn't really looking at anybody. Well, neither was my son, so we didn't think anything of it. But we also noticed Luke wasn't talking either. Well, neither was my son. And so we didn't think anything about it. But then as my son, William, which is this guy right here, this guy right here, and this guy right here, look at that hair, baby, he's getting long. As William started to develop farther, started to develop his verbal skills, be able to make, make and maintain eye contact, we all noticed Luke wasn't. And so this is my sweet sister, Jennifer Millington. She, they got him diagnosed on the autism spectrum. And I think that the day that I was told, as, as all families who have neurotypical disabilities in their family, it was about, it was, uh, it, it, someone sat on me. They just crushed me for a good minute, maybe two where I just, my brain was firing in all directions. I couldn't think of anything other than my poor Luke. But then what those families tend to do is they figure out, okay, this is my new normal. It's not gonna change no matter what I do. So how do we adjust? And so you can see that we got him involved in our drumming and you saw him from the, the news clip that was how we started doing it. We were at a Texans game. I'm sorry, we were watching a Texans game. No one is around. And I was idiotically trying to get Luke to look at me. I didn't understand why he wouldn't look at me. And so I kept doing what you might see other people doing. Look at me, Luke. <clears throat> Luke, look, Luke, Luke, look at me, Luke. Look at me. Why won't you look at me? I feel bad now, but that's what I was doing. And I finally had enough and just wanted to get up. And so as I got up, I just drummed a little... Well, that's that and got up. And as I got up before I was even fully standing, he put his iPad down and answered me. And I swear, I thought I hit a hole in one and no one was around. I was looking left and right. Did anyone see that? Did anyone see that? 
Of course they didn't. But so I sat back down and we drummed for about two minutes. And that, then he went back into his own little world on his iPad. But for two minutes, two minutes, he was mine. Those are two minutes that he and I will share that no one else will share. That, that For those two minutes, it was just he and I having a conversation. And when I discovered that, that would just like, oh my goodness. And so I'll probably stayed up till about two or three in the morning looking up drum therapy because I had no idea what music therapy was. And so I went to visit with my uh, colleague, Miss Christina Robbins, which I now, I, there she is. This is my sweet, sweet friend, Christina Robbins. She was in charge of the special needs department at our school. And I went over to her with an idea because I, I was very lucky to teach at a higher economic school uh, and, and within the school district that we had, we had some money. It wasn't a lot. We couldn't afford, you know, thousands and thousands of dollar things, but we could afford hundreds. And so I approached her. I asked, I showed her my ideas. I drummed a little of the games with her and I asked her, Hey, can, how much money can you put in towards buying some drums? So the band program put in $400 the special needs department put in 150 and then the PTA put in another 200. So we had almost a thousand. Oh, don't count me on my math. Sorry if I did that wrong, <laughs> but we had plenty of money to go get us some drums. And so we did, you can see them right here. We bought the nice, the kids drums from Remo, which I'll get back to later, but you can see um, now keep in mind when it's a public school, we aren't allowed to take pictures. So the pictures, I, I couldn't share with you videos from us doing it at our school. I couldn't show you pictures. I couldn't show you videos, but these are from some folks. And you can see right here, this is one, this is two grade levels of percussion. That's the kind of school I went to. It was two grade levels. We had a total of about 54 drummers in between this group, that group, the two grades. And so that was a lot of fun. You can see right here, <laughs> these, are, I, these are four siblings of all the same family and they all did let them drum together, which is a lot of fun. This is my buddy Mohawk. And so we started a club at my school. No one was getting paid. No one was staying after school. All I had to sacrifice was one planning period a week. That's all I had to sacrifice. Cause I mean, band directors, come on, let's be serious. Some of us don't really need our planning periods all the time. I do. Oh, oh. <laughs> sorry. Okay. <I> do. <laughs> okay. So percussion teachers don't always do that. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I'm sorry guys, beginner band drumming. Come on. It doesn't get easier than that. I mean, it's autopilot. You just turn yourself on, turn the Mr. Hicks show on have a good time, teach a mate on a hand, whatever. I didn't need planning periods for that, not all the time. So I had no problems giving up my planning period. And so we would find a way, all of our typical kids, um, you can see here, all these kids, what we did with them is they had to earn their way into the club. And so I gave their, um, their core curriculum teachers complete control over if they got to come to the sessions or not. So if the kid acted up in class, hey, you don't get to go to drumming this week. Kid didn't turn some homework in. No, you don't get to go. You need to finish your homework. And so that worked for these guys. And then for our neuro, uh, for the our special needs class, they had is more of behavior where if they followed instructions, if they didn't talk back, if they earned their way to the sessions. And so that's where we got going. It was just once a week, it's just simple little games that I'll get into later. Now, fast forward about two years. I'm sorry, back forward, go back another year, sorry. The culmination was we threw together a, um, a version of our school's alma mater. I had started dabbling in Logic Pro and I got together a little marimba African choir song and then I just moved the keys around to where it fit with our school song. And so we had the, we did a talent show at the end of the year where we had all the drummers lined up in two rows on hand drums and all that. And then we played our African music speak uh, through the speakers. And then the students that were all across the rest of the, um, the, the floor watching the show, they would sing the song along with us. And so I gave the, the, the point, they hit play. It, it was 
terrible. <laughs> it was awful. I mean, there was no sense of pulse. And that moment it clicked how much it worked because it was like, if I just don't listen to this, look at those smiles. I mean, some of the kids could not contain themselves with how much love they had for what they were doing. An entire ocean of students that normally ignore them, they were leading them to sing the school song. And the, the whole audience erupted in, in celebration of how wonderful it was. And that was wonderful. And so we shut that down, school is out, and then the positivity emails start coming in. And so I'm used to ones that just say, hey, Mr. Hicks, thanks for a great year. He had a good time and we're done. But then some of the kids from our special needs department, their parents started emailing me. And these were just paragraph long, heart wrenched emails. And the best one, like I told you in the, new, in the news clip you saw, for 20 minutes, my son feels like a normal kid because we have to remember what type of environment are these kids used to in their public schools? They get bused at a different time. They get their recess at a different time. They get their elective at a different time. They have their lunch at a different time. It's all separate. It's a school within a school. And you could see it when they would walk past my special needs friends. They would be looking at the wall as they walked because then the typical kids would be walking the opposite direction. Same thing with them. They just be doing their thing. But by the end of the year, you better believe it. Those drum buddies and the all-stars, they were going across the hall to high five them. It was wonderful. And so Miss Robbins, she decides to leave. She decides to get a job at the Woodlands United Methodist Church Special Needs Ministry. And she knew, and I knew, we were really onto something special. So she brought us with her. So we started off at Woodlands United Methodist Church. This was the first time we were able to make our reach go beyond my public school limitations. So we were able to get it out in the community. Now, if you'll notice, just about every one of them is in a different room because they didn't know where to put us. They put us in here. Oh, wow. Well, y'all are bothering the class going on next door. So then we moved over here and they're like, well, now you're too loud over here. We ended up finally in this room right here in the tile, which just happened to be in a separate building. So this is when we started to get to do our drum sessions outside. I mean, you can see with our drums we, outside the public school and it kept growing and it kept growing and it kept growing. And so we were there for three years. We got drumming going every week, except for the summer for three years. But then as three years wrapped up, I discover, lo and behold to me, there is a fee for using Woodlands United Methodist Church. They wanted us to pay like $65 a, a shot. They had just been waiving that for us for three years. And so we had that conversation. It was cordial. We all left on good terms, but it was understood, hey, we ain't paying. So that's when I made the call to the South County Community Center which is right near the Woodlands Mall. Those of you who are local Texans know where the Wood uh, Cynthia Woods Mitchell Pavilion is. That's one of the big event venues where Dave Matthews Band will come, Houston, Houston Symphony will come, uh, other people, not important. But anyway, I got the two big ones. And um, we're right there next to the library and an HEB and it's beautiful, it has plenty of parking and it was free. So this is the room that we've spent our last five years in everyone loves us there and i know you i don't know how well you can see but just look at their sweet little faces playing games with us that's where we've been the whole time and so here we are shut down for covid and this is where we stand now let them drum is already a 5013 c, sorry 501c3 nonprofit corporation which means that we are eligible for tax uh, tax free donate or tax deductible donations to us so we can we can go ahead and collect donations so th that we are able to thrive because the basic rule of nonprofit is as long as the person paying isn't the one receiving as long as that established was established we don't have to worry about can people afford us 
We don't want to worry about that. We're able to provide it for everyone through our donations. We've grown to over 350 members, which is amazing. And then three active chapters right now. We are in the Woodlands, we are in Conroe and in Klein, and we are expanding soon, which we plan on going out of the state for at least three of them. You can find us on Instagram at Let Them Drum. You can find us online at letthemdrum.org. And so, I will get to that in a second. We have questions coming in? No good. All right. So this was a joy. This was a complete joy to create. And I've had extreme luck in finding those niches. You know, a good friend of mine, Eric Rath and I, we have found great success with tap space publications with our music because we discovered that one little gap of kids who kind of weren't really having that much music written for them. So we discovered it was that second, third years where they have all this music for beginner percussion. They have all this music for high school percussion, but those couple years between their, <clears throat> excuse me, between their beginner year and high school, it was empty. And that's where we fit in. And so same here, as I discovered these poor sweet families getting turned away from competitive marching band. And the only times I was able to fit children with disabilities into my percussion class, it was on a one on one, like per case basis. And it had to be clear that like, listen, this is a two year experiment. As of right now, you need to plan that you will not be a part of the high school marching band. And that is not to blame anyone. Like I said, going back to the level of competition and what does competition do? Separates. And so it separates the kids who are the high achievers. Then you have the average achievers, then the low achievers. And we had to be able to go even far beyond that to those who need help achievers. The ones who, I just came up with that. Was that good? Yeah, good job. The, the, what was it? Need help achievers. The need help achievers, right? <laughs> the need help achievers that weren't even given a chance because honestly, you're right. They won't hit that symbol on two. They won't finish their suspended symbol crash on their correct count. They won't remember what rhythm you, you give them on a sheet of paper. They won't. And so in the competitive nature, that's not okay. But that's where we came in. We discovered a way to combine the two. And so that's where we have our special needs friends and our trained typical students. We're able to combine them. And so all of our kids think about it, guys, isn't it just the worst when you hear a student graduated from high school and you hear that they said, I can't wait to never play this instrument again. Oh, that hurts. That hurts that we killed their love. We smothered their love. We made them resent their instrument. And that's hard. And so what we were able to do was give them an outlet. And so yeah, marching band, you give it your all, buddy. Go after it. You just bust your butt, you know, get it all done. And so we figured out a way for them when marching band was over, hey, put down the chapada chapada cha cha cha, put down your arpeggios and your four and six mallets and your French grip. Just come over here and smile next to this kid. Play whatever you want, because we're trying to get this kid to laugh. We want this kid to stop when you stop. We want him to drum when you drum. And it's been a blessing. Some kids don't like it because they're still very, they're, they're very tunnel vision still. It's still all about them. Those kids show up for the first two and then leave because they figure out I'm not giving them any attention. I'm not calling on them to volunteer unless they're the example. It is, you're not there for you and your friend to have a good time. No, you are there to make sure the entire group has a good time. And that love you feel for drumming gets spread and shared throughout the room. And those kids, they separate pretty quick. They, they know who they are fairly quick. And so when I share pictures later on, you'll, you'll be able to tell. So, um, all right, let me get back to some videos. Not videos, sorry, share screen. Okay, done blabbing. 
So here is what our schedule looks like now since we've been able to grow. And I'm going to go over what ensembles and what experiences we have. But you can see we had a full steel band dates. We had full group drumming dates on Monday. So we had, we're even able to break it up into three, two different groups. And then you can see here, which is, was, was named the all-star group, but we pretty much got rid of that. Now it, it's just part of Let Them Drum. Here are, here are all the events that, you know, we were supposed to do. I think we got cut off right about here. Yeah, we did these two. <laughs> uh, we lost them all. They're all still friends or also connections, but we weren't able to continue them this year. So, yeah, I think we, we got have a question. question. Carrie asks, what are some suggestions or resources for activities to use for teachers who would like to implement this process in their schools or communities? Awesome. Great question. There are a plethora of things you can do. Because honestly, what is percussion? You know, it's striking an instrument to create tone, but who's to say that's not an instrument? Who's to say these aren't their instrument? Who's to say the lap? Because that's the thing is like, I discovered this by using my lap. That's all I did. And so if you're interested in starting your own program and you're not sure if you'll get the support, because I did a clinic about this at PAS, which I'll visit later, but it gives a document on how to do this. So I'll make sure that later on I'll find that link and I'll put it in the Facebook comments on this so it's shared. But you're not going to find much support mo money wise until it's a proven product. Like there, there aren't going to be many programs that will be willing to buy equipment for you as it's still an idea. And so I would recommend starting natural, just get the group in the room and just say, we're going to, you know, play a patty cake patty game. I don't know. Just let, let the name come up. Let, let, let just come up with a name. It could be whatever. It could be on your legs. It can be drumming on a rhythm. Now let's see. Can you see me still? Mm -hmm. So we can start off as just, Hey everyone. Then they go. Hey, all right. Good job. Hey, Hey, how about this one? Ah, oh, almost. You almost got it, buddy. Watch me. Watch me. Hey, you got it. Yeah, man. Good job. Good job. Good job. And that can be all you need because it's not about the actual instruments. It is about the sound. So that will be missing, but it's about the energy. It's about the connection. It's about paying attention to a kid who's used to being just an object in the room. They're, they're used to not even being paid attention to. So just the fact that you are finding ways to connect with them, that, that could be all you need. I'm telling you, get one AP, get one principal in there to watch it. And when they see how it just immediates connection, immediate joy that they're not used to seeing, once they see that, that is when you can say, okay, well, I'm glad you like that because, you know, Toka percussion, Remo percussion, LP. And then if you'd like, you can already have a list started of instruments that you could use. They have plenty of levels. I personally am a, we, or Let Them Drum is a Remo recreational music partner. So we use exclusive Remo percussion. And that was a personal choice because I've discovered not only do they sound fantastic, you can roll them downstairs and they don't break, you know, they can, cause I mean, with the students that I've been used to doing, there will be kids that will throw it because they, it's not because they're angry, but it might just be because they have lost control of how much energy they have. Have you ever seen this? Does that look familiar? You know, it's just, they get so excited about what you're doing that, that they get more energy than what their body can process. And so it comes out in strange ways. And sure enough, sometimes it will become drop kicking the drum across the room, <laughs> whatever. So, okay, I hope that answered your question. Yes. Okay, we have another question from Joey. Um, he asks, are you considering any virtual outreach to work with your members during COVID-19? Funny you ask, Gail. Yes, I have tried it. And what I've discovered, it's, I'm still working on how to make that connection. 
because you know it's so funny how even though um, COVID shut us down, real estate picked up, baby. I mean, I, I'm 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 busy. I'm I'm doing a lot of just home inspections and all these addenda and home searches. I'm I'm so busy and all that that I have let my other friends who are ahead of the game on that, let them figure out how to work it. And then they'll tell me, cause I tried it once, just a one-on-one -on -one with my, my boy T-Bird, Tarun Bhatnagar. Um, it didn't work. It didn't work, especially because of this right here. Cause sometimes the microphone, the microphone can't decide who to listen to. Sometimes it'll pick up my hands, but if I'm talking while this is happening, doesn't pick, it doesn't pick me up as well anymore. And so our microphones got in a fist fight. It's, are you going to play the music that's being played or are you going to play the music that's being created and coming to the microphone? And so, yes, I am definitely working on that, but I'm telling you that, well, I should re rephrase that. I am reaching out to my beautiful family of percussive art society. They, I know that they are on it. So once I've come in contact with them on how to do it, Absolutely, it'll be on. Okay, we have another comment from Gail. Okay. Our friend Gail Fisher asked, um, can you comment on the auditory processing, the executive function, motor planning, the math in the head, midline crossover benefits? Gail, what are you doing to me, Gail? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't quite ready for that. But yeah, I again, that I, I know my strengths, but more importantly, I, I know my weaknesses and this was not my training. My training was hemiola, minor scales, major scales, you know, that's where my training was. And so I was lucky to get hold of Dr. Hai Young Lim, who was at Sam Houston State University, who is now up at Oral Roberts University teaching music therapy. I asked her those questions. And so what, what the beautiful chemistry was, because also I should mention Miss Samantha Atwood, who is an excellent music therapist in Klein. That's what she helped us on, was I would come with a fun game. And I'll show you some of the games here in a little while. I would come to them with a fun game, and then they would tell me, well, that works on auditory processing, or that works on volume tolerances and things like that. And so I took all the because i mean man if you know music therapists you know man <laughs> they are smart they are extremely smart and all those words would go over my head and so we would just kind of tame it down because you um when you hear auditory processing when you hear all those kinds of words getting thrown at you it can be intimidating because some people don't know what they mean and that makes them feel like oh you're talking to me like I should know what that is, but I don't. And that can sometimes kind of block the connection. And so I've, I've actually made a conscious decision to not use those words because I want to make sure that I don't want to create anyone. I don't want to create a position where they're sitting there going like, yeah, what did you say? Yeah, I don't want to create that, that situation. But yes, the auditory processing and all that is that you can see kids, they need to... They're, like you said, their, their brain just doesn't quite fully understand how to process what's going on. Like, for instance, the eye contact thing. It's not that they don't want to look at you. It's like when I look at you, I see a person as a concept. You're, you're conceptual to me. I'm just looking at you knowing that you are the person I'm listening to because my brain can process that. But for some people, they can't process that. And so their brain is getting so much information of eye color iris color, how, how much the veins are in our eyes, what kind of shading the light is making on our face. Ew, what's that on his face right there? Where does hair go? Like they're <laughs> thinking about all of that. And so they have to make a choice is, do I look at you or do I listen to you? I can't do both. And so it's very similar with the hearing. And so a lot of times their first session will be Mommy, can we go? Mommy, can we go? They're scared. The, the, the amount of volume and the inconsistency of the volume, so they're not prepared for it. They don't know what's coming. That creates just a meltdown. But that's usually only the first or two, two first two sessions, somewhere around there. It's a variation on mommy, can we go home? And no. Uh-uh. 
uh uh it might be that but i will tell you when i go back to these videos i'll start i'm in the, in the pictures i will point out to you who was like that because you'll see their faces just lit up with joy and like oh yeah hey remember those first two times you stayed for four minutes then left well then all of a sudden they need their mommy i didn't need my headphones today and before you know it, they're developing the tolerance for the sound. They're, they're, they're becoming habituated and it, it helps a lot. And then that can translate to a grocery store or a football game or the hallway in schools. It helps them. And so that's a very, a very basic, simple construct of what we get to improve with. So I hope that answers your question. So I've been talking for a super long time. I'm gonna go ahead and finish, get through. Oh no, what screen am I sharing? My screen in this one? Okay, yeah, so like guys right here, this guy couldn't hang out. This guy, forget it, he would play it once. I think like maybe two minutes after this picture was taken, this drum ended up over here, you know? And then, um, so anyway, getting back to my experiences, I'm sorry. These are the experiences we have, but like I told you in these um, group drumming that we don't typically take video, so you can see here we are doing our group drumming activities. That's our bread and butter. That is the flagship of Let Them Drum. Every chapter that is opening, they can, if they want, do some of the other experiences that I'll talk about here in a second. But this one, they will. This one is not the option. Junkyard stuff over the weekends, that's an option. Doing a steel drum band, that's an option. Pipe band, well, that only works for us because we're Woodlands Highlanders. This one is not an option. This is, will be your home base. This will be LTD HQ. You will do these. And so we were, after getting this settled, we ventured out into, here's a retirement home that we did with some buckets, which is a lot of fun. And then we have our junkyard with the buckets and the metal trash cans. This one was at an arts festival. And after that, the steel drum band. These are all of those elementary school level jumbie jams. It's just one key of G. So we can see right here. We use image based where we just took care of everything image based and we learned the songs. And then we um, actually are lucky enough to have a, 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 a piper in, in our area. We actually have, he, he has about two or three pipers that will play with him. We formed our pipe band, which I'll show you here in a little while. And they, um, we get together on the home football game. So all these little kitties, we all get to go on the field and then this in the bleachers. I'm sorry, in front of the bleachers, and it's a whole lot of fun. So here are some highlights, real quick. I just want to show y'all. So all the experiences we get. Oh, this one right here. This is our very first performance at the children's festival. That's little Brooklyn. She's like 16 now. That's little William. He's 15 or about to be 15, 14. Yeah, so we got to play with our local Houston mascots. Oh, look at these little guys. Oh yeah, and check it out. We have the one and the only Miss Jenny Hill. Yeah, what? Huh? Oh, Miss Julie Hill. <laughs> she was, we were lucky enough to perform at the Progressive Art Society doing our clinic on exactly what we're talking about now is getting other groups to be able to do this. And you can see we got to meet our, the publisher, the Task Space Publication. Here is a wonderful outdoor event we got to do at the Woodlands Waterway Arts Festival. Look at these little guys. Here we are at Drum Corps International. We got to do a drum battle, which I'll show a video later. Here's us getting the drum uh, in downtown, beautiful downtown Houston, a 4th of July festival, drumming with Toro. This one is a lot of fun. You can see that um, we actually got to go drum at one of the Harvey shelters a couple of years ago. These poor, poor families lost everything and they were so stressed out. The kids didn't know what to do. So we went over there and we had a drum circle with them. And yeah, yeah, it was, it was hot. It was hot. So, all right. Now, if I can, one more question. Yeah, another question from Joey. Joey. Have you collected any data proving that your members are improving in academic and social skills after participating? No, we have not. That is not what we do. I, I am not out to prove anything. Uh, we're not out there to prove that we have space in the school districts. I'll let other people worry about that. Because I mean, I enjoy being Uncle Ralphie. And so that's what Let Them Drum is. We are not trying to heal them. And that, that's, a, I'm glad you brought that up, but I need to make that distinction. Music therapy 
is a treatment. That is a diagnosis where you need this treatment or you have these ailments. We are going to treat them with this and track our data. So we'll know in six months or a year, all that. That is music therapy. That's, and we are not. So we get by that by music, th uh, we are therapeutic. So we are doing the same activities that a music therapist would do. We're doing the same kind of energy as the high school drummers do, but we don't have any of those expectations. We are not expecting anyone to receive treatment because we don't have any kind of attendance policy. All you have to do is be a member to be able to come and membership's free. And so as we all parents know, if you have no money, if you have no skin in the game, you're not going to go to every one of them, you know, and there's plenty of kids who will come once or twice. And then I don't see again for two years or they'll come for a year and then never see them again. Or they come two times and they're out for six months. There is no attendance policy and having no attendance policy makes tracking impossible. It would be a moot point because we don't have data to track because it's not consistent. Because I know, especially here in Texas, if I go up against football, I'm going to lose. If I go up against baseball, I'm going to lose. Those kids and those parents, they will choose the baseball game. They will choose the football practice. When Eric and I were doing Beyond Basic Percussion and I, we were making videos for that, I had a kid who came in and said, sorry, my mom said I can't be on this. It's the video that has been seen around the world. It's been all over the place because he would have missed a lacrosse practice. That's all the reason they, they, they didn't let him come. It's pretty amazing. Another question. Okay. I have a question from Ashley in Tennessee, Memphis, Tennessee. Do you have any tips on how to use drums in special needs class, especially with a class with students on many different grade levels, examples, pre-K to fifth grade? Yeah, actually, that's a, a great way to do it. But like I was saying before, and I'm glad Joey brought it up, is that as long as your intents, your, your intentions are uh, holistic and entertainment and connection, like a social, as long as those are your goals, you're fine, but just don't make the mistake of thinking, hey, I'm going to teach all these kids how to speak. I'm going to teach all these kids how to play this song. As long as you keep your expectations in check, because you're, it's, it's a different world. It's a different world when you talk to kids who just, they, they, their parents have to pay kids to come to the birthday party. Or they just they're very used to just being left in a room and not doing anything. You're going to be shocked at how much they love the volunteer typical students because they're used to being ignored. And so as long as that is your goal, absolutely. Very simple. The ones that I like to do are just call and response like I had done before. But honestly, if you even just want to put some music on, hand the drums out and just let them get at it. Just let them experience joy. Let them experience what it is to hit an instrument <laughs> and it's okay. No one's going to stop you. If you decide you want to stand up and dance, no one's going to stop you. If you get so excited, you scream, no one's going to stop you. So as long as you keep your expectations in check, I think we'll be good. Okay, awesome. So let me go ahead and am I sharing screen still? No. All right, so let me go ahead and send over to the website so you can see some things. Okay, if you'd like to visit us on what on letthemdrum.org, you can see here, here are all the ensembles about what they do. But what I would like you to notice is look here. These are all the organizations that we work with. Some of them we haven't worked with for a while. Some of them we work with every year. But these are all the organizations that we have found a way to collaborate with. No one got paid, no money changed hands. They had an event, they invited us over, we had a good time. You can also check us out on our Facebook page. You see right here. Now what I wanna show, cause I, like I said, I wasn't able to share very many videos of us group drumming, but you can find a couple here and there. You can find us on Instagram. Look at that. I learned what the Jewish Halloween was because we drummed at Pur Purim. It's a lot of fun. You can find us on Instagram. 
let me see. I'm running out of time. So let me go ahead and get to some vi some different yeah. videos. 10 minutes. This is the one that we do now. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. So that's the one we do now. Could, could you hear how we just let some music play? That breaks the ice, that breaks the barrier, that makes it seem achievable, accessible, because when you don't have music playing, it completely falls apart, which is okay. But with the music playing, that won't happen. So here's some of our pipe band. My daughter. Oh, ha. That's a lot of fun. Okay. And then we'll chop down here is us at the, the creme de la creme was when we got to be performing at downtown Houston events. Great halftime entertainment here uh, at BBVA Compass Stadium. A first half that saw a lot of controversy, some great goals, and some very open up and down play. Yeah, get it, baby. Event. All right, and then here's when we got to perform with the Rockets, at the Houston Rockets, sorry. Not a good first half for the Houston Rockets. As the oh, we were losing. <laughs> so much fun and then okay here is when we got the drum at oh 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 what did i do this is at canopy cancer survivorship center so everyone you're watching is going through some level of treatment or recovery of cancer fun and here is us performing at dci we got nate dog and my favorite part of this is as we drum we get the drum with um where is it as we got done, look what we got to do at the end. Look at that. Connection, baby. They came over and drummed with us after the drum battle. And yes, that is Bruno Mars. All right, awesome. Okay, so man, I talked way too long. Sorry about that, y'all. Seven minutes, okay. Good deal. So where are we going next? Let them drown. We are expanding out of state, which is a lot of fun. This is all I can tell you right now. There you are, is that we're going to some different cities. Remember this, y'all, if you can, it's not about the drumming. Through the drums, we're able to enjoy each other's company and enjoy a common experience. We're able to connect with each other in a new and different way that is not spotlighted enough in our community and we heal, which is just fills my heart with joy to know that I can play a tiny part in that. So that being said, tune in weeknights, Monday through Thursday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time to keep watching the Keeping the Beat live and remember to tell your friends about our program. Please consider registering for an arts integration workshop from STEM and STEAM on June 16th. The workshop is free and features nationally recognized experts in this field. Register at the URL at the bottom. Go to the fly. Oh, I mispronounced that. Sorry, which is being posted now in the comments. Presenters who wish to apply to host an episode, send applications to tmea.org. 
we want to say a special word of thanks to our school program supporters, particularly the CMA and CMA Foundation, Metro Nashville Arts Commission, and Tennessee Arts Commission. These programs would not be possible without their investment in education. Oh, that was fun. All right, looking good. So we have five minutes left. Our, if, if you'd like, we, we can certainly talk more if you'd like. And I understand it goes without saying that I recognize everyone is in pain. Everyone is mad. Everyone is angry. Everyone is frustrated. Let's keep in mind that we love each other, that we're all Americans, right? We are all Americans. Let's try to get together as much as we can and let this form of communication let it be the start. Maybe a man got out of prison and his son is too mad at him to talk to him. He doesn't understand, but they can drum and that could start it. Maybe I am on this far side of the political spectrum, but my friend is on this far on the side of the spectrum. Well, you're an idiot. Well, you're an idiot. Okay, shut up. Stop. Just stop. It's fun to get angry, but now's not the time. Here, have a drum. Get that conversation started. That can be easy to do. It can be hard to do. It may not work, but we have to try. Because we're all trying to figure out how to continue life. I don't want to call it a new normal. I, re I refuse to accept that this is our new normal. And I hope neither do you. We will come out of this. We will come out strong and hopefully more together than we have just right now. I've never known a time that we've been farther apart. So possibly drumming can be my way to connect with our countrymen, with our fellow Americans to figure out how we're going to help each other through our pain and suffering. So now that I said that, I think we got about four minutes left. You wanted to post that, the link to the, team, the clinic that you gave? Oh yeah, I'll go ahead and go find that clinic sheet right now. I'll tell you what, how about I send it back over to the YouTube and while I'm looking for the documents, enjoy the chicken dance. Oh, wait, what happened? <laughs> if you can't tell who has uh, special needs, I won't tell either. Almost there, y'all. Yeah. I'm, I'm creating a PDF right now. Okay, and the minute I have left, how do I? 
Sorry to ruin the fun, but that's it right there. Now, um, let's see. How do I send this on? Because I've got a PDF document right here that I'd like to share. But I'm not seeing how to share it. I know I've got one minute left. So, oh, it's 8 o'clock. Dang it. Does that mean I'm cut off? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. But let me just figure out. I'll just let me share this one screen for those who are asking. Here is the document that went out for the Percussive Art Society. Sorry. Okay, so right here is it what gives you all the information you're asking about. It tells you what your art ideal scenario would be like, what research you wanna do, what role you would play, what role the special needs department would play, what role, role your administration will play and how to work them. What kind of budget you would need? What if you don't have a budget? Figure the time schedules out, figure out who's going to volunteer. And then it explains a couple of very simple games. And as I say this stuff, I'm realizing this is probably what I should have focused on. So anyway, um, I will figure out a way to get this document onto the, um, I'll figure out a way to get this document onto the Facebook page or link to the YouTube because this part of technology I have stepped out of. I just want to sell some houses. So if y'all know how to do all that, that's great. We'll figure out a way to get it out to everybody. So thank you so much, uh, Julie Hill. I love you. I appreciate everything you do. You are an immortal soul. We get along together so well. I, I'm so happy that my UK family and my PAS family are so close. We have a lot of fun. So thank you to TNMEA. That's the Tennessee chapter of Percussive Art Society, Joshua Simons at PAS, my mom, Betty Hicks, Eric Rath, my co-author, my beautiful wife who you haven't seen yet. Hi. Hey! <laughs> awesome. All right, y'all. Well, enjoy the rest of your evening. I hope you're able to take something away from this, that you're able to find a way to... Uh, do this kind of thing on your own program or just a way to make a friend. So thank you very much and good night.